Hey everybody, so it is finally update time. I am now 22 weeks and a couple days. My weeks change on Saturdays. So I'm very happy to have made it this far. Uh, I can't express how, you know, blessed I feel. And honestly, when I, when I think about it, like I'm in my sixth month of pregnancy, it blows my mind. This feels so surreal. But anyways, this will be an update from the past six weeks. And I have my planner with me so that I can miss the least amount of information as possible because I've been kind of scatterbrained. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I don't forget anything significant and I'm able to get through all of this stuff with you guys. Uh, it could end up being a kind of long video. I'm trying not to be. I'm in my car because my husband is actually in a work meeting and I'm just kind of hanging out here waiting on him. Today's actually his birthday, so I don't know what we're doing today, but anywho, um, the video I posted a couple days ago, I had actually recorded forever ago and had forgot to put up, but that was um, up to 16 weeks. So I guess I'm going to start with week 16 <laughs> because at the end of week 16, I had a specialist appointment and they checked my cervix ever since I went at 11 or started going to the specialist at 11 weeks. They have been checking my cervix every two weeks to make sure it stays nice and strong. Um, so that at that point was still looking really good and it was measuring as long as I stayed above a 2.5, I was good. And it was measuring above a four. So it was really strong. Um, also that day I had to pick the, uh, it was the deadline to pick the insurance for me and the baby and who will be covering us, you know, for my hospital stay and labor and all that good stuff. Um, so that all happened that week. That was a very, um, at the specialist, they do an ultrasound every time, but it was just a very basic one. They didn't even do measurements or anything. It was literally like, check the heartbeat, uh, see what, you know, position the baby's in and just, you know, all that kind of good stuff. I had asked her because my, as you guys know from the video I posted, my um, Harmony never worked, the blood t gender test. So I also had planned, as you all know, to ask if they could take a quick peek in between the legs at this appointment, which they did. And she gave me an 80% positive answer of what it was. And uh, we didn't really... I don't know. I couldn't do a gender reveal on an 80% answer. Like I wanted to know for sure. I didn't want anyone to get excited for a certain gender and then have gender disappointment later or um, go and, you know, oh, buy anything and then have to return and have all this. So we decided that we were just going to take her answer half-heartedly that day. And we have an, an ultrasound, or excuse me, we have ultrasounds every two weeks. So we knew in two more weeks was our anatomy scan and we figured we could just hold out till then and by the anatomy scan we would the baby would for sure be far enough along to be like yes it's a hundred percent a blank <laughs> so anywho all of that happened that day and then that saturday i hit 17 weeks and we had a baby class and uh it was about infant care, so I got to learn a lot about how to take care of a baby, you know, in the very the very first weeks of having one, you know, things you don't normally know. So week 17 was very significant because it was the week that I first started feeling what, well, at the time I had no idea. I was really second guessing myself, but I started feeling movement at week 17. And... I'm going to try really hard not to slip up and tell the gender, so forgive me. <laughs> I've already had to stop and redo this once. I don't want to have to do it again. Um, so 
when the baby started moving, it kind of felt like, you know how most people call it flutters or whatever? I would describe it as almost like bubbles inside of your stomach or like something very light. And I only noticed it when I was laying on the couch, not doing anything else. If I was, you know, distracted throughout the day, it could probably happen and I would have had no idea. But I would notice it once a day, normally after I ate and I was just relaxing. And uh, yeah, it was really cool. Some people tell me that 17 weeks is early for that to happen. But um, I don't know, for me, that's when it started. And I loved it. As the week progressed, like into 18 and 19, especially closer to 19, it started feeling as if someone was touching me inside, like brushing their finger across like (laughs) part of, I guess, what would be my uterus or my whatever. I could just feel it from the insides. Now it feels like full on movements. Like I can feel the baby kick and punch and roll and it's so cool but my husband hasn't been able to feel it from the outside yet he never seems to be around when the baby is going at it so (laughs) hopefully soon my hubby will get to experience that because it's really really cool feeling and it's just a nice little reminder that hey there's you know a little baby in there so I love it um there was something else I was going to say about that oh Around, like, week 2021, the movement started, like, the baby could, like, kick my pelvis, my pelvis bone, and wow, did that make you jump. I would have to turn onto my side because the baby would be getting me so good. (laughs) So, okay. Anyways, um, that was the big one on on doctor. Wow. On week 17, I had two more doctor's appointments that week. At the beginning of the week, um, I went to my local office and I got drawn because the harmony didn't work. There was another drawing called a quad screen that it was just a screening test. So it it didn't give you conclusive results, but it gave you, um, either a higher chance or a lower chance of having chromosomal abnormalities. So um, because my harmony didn't work, we went ahead and drew for that. Well, and so the bad news begins. It's been a rough, it's been rough, guys. I think that's why I've been away for so long. Okay, so that was at the beginning of the week. Um, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. It was Wednesday, I'm pretty sure. I got a phone call from my specialist, um, which I had missed the call, and I had a voicemail saying, call me back as soon as possible. Uh, We really need to go over your quad screen results and blah, blah, blah. Well, as you guys know, doctors say, well, if we don't call, like no news is good news pretty much. If they call you, something is wrong. So when I called back, the lady, she wasn't a doctor or anything, but she did not explain what exactly this test was or meant. This is exactly what she said to me. She said, your quad screen came back positive for Down syndrome. (sighs) Man, did that hit me like a ton of bricks. I was home alone. I I didn't even know how to respond. There's no way to mentally prepare yourself for someone to call and tell you that. And uh, you just never think that that, would happen to you, you know? So, but that's literally all she said. Um, so I called my husband. I was a wreck and told him what they had said. And he ended up leaving work early and we just spent that night together. And really like we tried to take it in, but then at the same time, we just, (laughs) It's really unexplainable. You really, if you went through a a pregnancy and you've had them just call you and lay on some news to you and, you know, with you being uninformed on what this means for the baby or, I mean, I had no idea anything. It just, it just really hits you hard and it's emotional That week I cried the most I've cried in a long time. But the next day, 
No. Yeah. The next day on Thursday, I called my local office and I told them what happened when the specialist um, nurse called me and they said, okay, well, calm down. And then they explained that it was just a screening and to come in and see the doctor and he would tell us our ratio and it, it wasn't a positive result or a for sure answer. It was just a kind of like a you you're at risk, a higher risk for downs. I told her, the lady who called me said, it's positive for downs. She didn't say anything about any of this, but anyways, that kind of made me upset. And I was like, why would they want to put me through this emotional roller coaster? You know, this is my baby we're talking about. You know, why wouldn't they want to approach it in a better way or not even tell me on the phone and just have me come in and explain it properly? But uh, excuse me, whatever. I mean, anyway, the next day, that OB, she was able to get me in to see my local office the next day, and I saw a doctor, and he was able to explain all of this to me. The quad screen tests for your four main um, chromosomal deformities, trisomy 13, 18, 21, and spina bifida, I believe. Well... Sorry about that. Phone issues. <laughs> Anyways, our quad screen came back. None of the other three came back as a risk for the screening. Um, just the trisomy 21. And so, I mean, I guess the other ones are your, just your normal odds, which I believe are one in... Are they one in a thousand? Or Anyways, it's some ridiculously low percent that... If the screening doesn't pop up, pretty much the screening becomes positive if your risk is lower, or excuse me, higher than 1 in 250, I believe. So, anyways, we went in there and he told us our risk, which is 1 in 85. Uh, it puts us at about a 1.2 or 3% risk of the baby having Downs. So when you, you know, once we got that new information and then he explained that all the test is doing is looking at like whatever's in my blood, different hormones and different whatever, and looking at the different levels and pretty much saying, oh, you look like you could be a candidate for someone who would have a Down syndrome baby and here's your risk. So I just, we felt so much better when we left there and had it explained to us. He also offered to do a maternity 21 chromosomal blood test, which gives you yes or no answers, or should I say positive and negative answers. It checks for a bunch of different things. Um, if any of you guys are having the same issues with the quad screen, I would definitely recommend asking about the Materna 21. Uh, unless, you know, I guess the Harmony and the, what was the other one? There's a few. They're all pretty much... This, they're very similar. They're all blood tests, but the Materna 21 has a very high percent accuracy. You know, it's not often you would get a, a uh, false positive or anything like that. So anyways, uh, he went ahead and drew me for that on Friday, the 27th of February, and that can take up to two weeks to come back. So we were on another long waiting game. I mean, Honestly, it was worse than the two-week wait in between, you know, like when we were trying to get pregnant. It was the worst two-week wait ever. The constant stress and worry and what if this and what if that and oh my god, I, I about drove myself nuts. <laughs> Luckily, my uh, we just, you know, we had to have faith and whatever was meant to be or, you know, whatever was going to happen was going to happen regardless and there wasn't anything I could do about it. it. It's out of our control. So that kind of just, you know, we just had to let go and let it be. So that um, that weekend was actually after this test was drawn on Friday. That Saturday was my sister's baby shower. And it was kind of hard to go and be happy. Not that I'm not happy for her. It's nothing, for, you know, personal at all. It was just after having such negative news about the baby all week and being so upset that week, it was kind of hard to go and put on a smile, you know, around a bunch of people and all that. But um, it ended up helping me a lot to get out of the house and to to be around 
some people and stuff. So, uh, that went well. It was really fun. She got tons of good stuff. It makes me excited for my shower. <laughs> uh, so the next week, oh yeah, so then we hit week 18 on her shower. Week 18, I don't have anything significant. That was just a long week of waiting. Week 19, we hit on March 7th. Another waiting week. Um, that Monday, March 9th, we had a specialist appointment, which was our anatomy scan. At the anatomy scan, because um, we had seen a genetic counselor once we got the quad results back. And he had explained there was a bunch of markers they could look for in the anatomy scan also to see if there's other signifiers that point towards downs. So anyways, um, and he looked at family history and stuff, which there's no family history at all. And then with that percent, and then he was going to look at the anatomy scan on March 9th and kind of compile it all together and look at it, you know, side by side. So um, anatomy scan, <sighs> there's good and bad news. But the bad news continues throughout most of this video, unfortunately. I wish it was all happy. I wish. I wish, I wish. But uh, there, it, it has been rough. At the anatomy scan, I guess I'll do bad news first and then we'll end on good notes. <laughs> okay, so they, you know, they check for everything. They check every organ, every measurement. They, they just really do it a very excuse me, they do a very invasive scan all over the baby to uh, just get, you know, to find out more about it, check on the health of the baby, see how they're growing, yada, yada, uh, make sure all the organs are there and functioning and look okay and all that good stuff. So, so bad news first. Um, the baby's, it was pretty obvious at first, the baby's size I'm trying so hard not to give away gender. That's, <laughs> I'm struggling. The baby's size um, was smaller. Like as she was doing the measurements, you could tell, oh, that's off. That should, could, you know, when they put the little thing up there, they click it from this part of this, you know, whatever they're measuring. And it comes up on the bottom with like how many weeks that equates to. I noticed every every single measurement was small, a week to two weeks. Uh, the head, the humerus, which is the arms, uh, the stomach, all a week-ish, about a week. And the legs were the worst at almost two weeks. So... I was noticing that just as she was going through it. That was before we even seen the doctor. And I was like, oh, great. You know, what? what is, ugh, <laughs> what now? <laughs> so then she, second bad news, she checks the cord insertion, I guess, uh, how it's attached from the baby to the placenta and the the excuse me the cord is supposed to have two arteries and a vein well our baby's cord only has one artery and one vein so they call this a uh, a single artery cord or single umbilical artery i think that's what it is yeah uh, at that point, the doctor had come in because uh, the tech went and got her, I guess. The tech was like, oh, man, this girl has a lot of problems. I better get the doc in here. But <laughs> the doctor was in there, and I immediately was like, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for the baby? Well, the three main effects of the single umbilical artery is, one, having a small baby. She said that's more predominant in the third trimester. I am in the middle of my second or a little past the middle of my second. So at that point, actually, no, I was in the, right in the middle of my second. 
So I said, can it affect the baby in the second? She said, yes, it can. Uh, you know, so anyways, that's the first thing. The second thing is heart issues with the baby. The third is kidney issues with the baby. Um, at that point, she didn't really give me tons of answers on that, but that was kind of how she explained it to me in there. Um, she, she kind of, this was before, um, you know, we got any blood results back. We were in the middle of waiting and she made it seem like, oh, well, the baby's legs are small. That's a Down syndrome sign. <laughs> the, or a marker. The, uh, the cord, I guess it's more common for babies with chromosomal defects to have a two vessel cord. Um, another thing that was wrong was at my early appointments at my 11 week, 14 week, they said, uh, they checked for the nasal bone and nuchal fold, which are two basic, uh, tests where they, you know, to see if the baby could have, or is at risk for chromosomal issues and my nuchal fold. And I had a good nasal bone at both of those. Now, as of the anatomy scan, they are saying the nasal bone is not there, not apparent. And I said, how can a nasal bone be there and then not be there? Or, you know, did your tech that time mess up or like what? Yep. They said they, they have no explanation for that. They just said, oh, we'll have to wait and see if that, you know, if the nose calcifies or what happens, it won't cause your baby to look funny when they're born, blah, blah, blah. But she kept she was pointing that towards Downs too, all in the two week wait for the results. So we had, we had a lot of bad news at our anatomy scan between those three main things. Uh, the good news was the baby's heart. They took all the images of that. That looked very good. Excuse me. And the beat was nice and strong and it just made me feel like, wow, even with all of this stuff going wrong, that little baby is such a, such a fighter in there that, you know, it doesn't even care about all of this stuff. They're just going about their day and <laughs> being happy. So that was good. All of the other organs were present. There was no organs missing. Um, the kidneys looked good. So those are two of the risks of the single umbilical artery, the kidneys and the heart. Those both looked good as of now. Um, and the baby very active. So I guess the, that was our, on the good side. Oh, and the nuchal fold was still good too. I know that's supposed to be done early on, which they did, and they said it was good early on, but they do it every time, and it still looks good. So that's a good sign, uh, of course. So we went into her office afterwards, and she started explaining how she really wanted us to do. She was really pushing an amnio. Um, for those of you that don't know what that is, the test is scary. <laughs> they insert this big needle through your stomach into the sack the baby's in and they from my understanding they pull fluid from the sack and they can test that fluid for chromosomal defects and that is the highest uh positive excuse me the highest uh percent of the test you know not being inaccurate like it's the most pretty much just the most accurate form. And I told her, I was like, well, we just had the maternity, excuse me, the maternity 21 results drawn and we should be getting the results back towards the end of this week. I want to wait on those before I put my baby at risk by you doing the amnio, which by the way, has a, I believe one in 200 chance of miscarriage. I asked her, oh, have you had women miscarriage here? She's like, yeah, it's a real risk. It happens all the time. And I was like, Oh, you're just a little too comfortable with the idea of miscarriage for me to do that test with you. <laughs> so 
I refused it. I said, I am waiting for my Materna 21 results. Those are, the test is 99.9% .9 accurate. So if that came back negative, to me, I can deal with the 0.1% chance of it being wrong and I, I can live with that. You know, that's fine because I'm not going to risk our baby's life, especially off of assumptions and markers that could or could not be there or whatever. So... Let me get my planner. That. They also. Oh my gosh. I forgot. Okay. So. I wanted to do some kind of big special video announcement. Which I still will. Because the next day. They had told us the gender. They confirmed the gender on Monday the 9th. And the next day on the 10th. We had a gender reveal party. And. I I have a recording of us telling, you know, immediate family, and I want to post that with how we told them, but I don't know if I'm able to or if they would want their faces on YouTube. So I guess I'm just going to just say, I mean, <laughs> you guys, um, no one's really giving me guesses on here. I guess this would be a good time to pause the video if you wanted to guess. And then I wrote on my planner on the date, you know, team blank. So I can just show you. So what's your guess, girl or boy? Do, 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 do. You got your guess. <laughs> I should have showed you guys a belly shot. I have pictures. I just need to get them together. Okay, my husband's calling me. He might be done. I'm going to have to probably put this on pause and finish it.